Okay, thank you for introduction. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer to invite me to this wonderful workshop. Uh, it's really nice. And uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, quantum tunneling in the universe. Okay. And the uh, plan of my talk is as follows. First, I'm going to give some uh, review of the basic of the quantum tunneling, uh, how to estimate the tunneling rate uh, okay, in, in the universe. Uh, for example, uh, starting from the uh, quantum mechanics and uh, going to the quantum field theory. And finally, uh, I would like to discuss the uh, quantum tunneling uh, by taking into account the gravity effect. Okay. And uh, first, I'm going to give us some uh, basic technique for uh, estimate of the such a tunneling rate by assuming that the uh, uh, background is uh, homogeneous and isotropic. But now, uh, this kind of tunneling has renewed interest in the context of the fixed physics. And uh, in that case, you see, in the current universe, uh, our universe is not, on, not uh, homogeneous nor the uh, isotropic. We have uh, uh, many uh, structures like a star and the galaxy and uh, even black holes. And uh, in the next, uh, in the second stage, second session, section, I would like to discuss how such impurities or structures affect the tunneling rate. First of all, I'm going to discuss the uh, black holes uh, as a uh, site of for the uh, tunneling. Okay. And the, Next, I'm going to discuss some small compact object as impurities. And finally, I'm going to go back to the uh, Kabra cores again. Okay. And finally, I'm going to discuss, uh, give the some uh, conclusions. Okay. Anyway, let me start. So first, let us consider the, this kind of the simple wide dimensional point particle systems with the following potentials. Now, maybe we can write, okay. So this kind of the simple potential. Okay, anyway, shall we consider the, this kind of the simple potential? So the point X1 is completely uh, stable at the classical level, you see. As long as the total energy is uh, lower than the uh, B0, we don't have any dynamics, classical dynamics, which uh, represent a transition from point X1 to X2 because we cannot overcome the uh, potential barriers. Okay. And uh, so in this sense, a particle sitting on the X1 stays there forever, at least classical. But quantum mechanically, you see, as you know, it can decay or penetrate into the X2. Uh, quantum mechanically, we can uh, penetrate uh, this potential barrier. Okay. So how to estimate this? Uh, quantum tunneling rate. So, thanks to the standard textbook, you see, uh, through the WKB approximations, we can easily estimate the, uh, this transition rate from X1 to X2 by uh, these simple formulas. Okay. And uh, how to understand this simple formula, this transition rate? Okay. As you know, as I explained in the previous uh, slides, of course, there is no classical dynamics. As long as the total energy is smaller than the uh, potential energy at the barriers. Okay? In fact, uh, as long as E minus Bs is negative, uh, Ds dt velocity must be, uh, kinetic energy must be positive. So no classical dynamics. But if we make the weak rotation, T equal minus I tau, then the effectively this equation, uh, equation motion or uh, energy conservation can be changed into this one, like this one. So for this uh, weak rotated equation motions, even if E minus Vs is negative, okay, we have a classical dynamics. And shall we estimate uh, this exponent of the transition rate uh, by using the, this Euclidean classical dynamics. Okay. Then it can be decast into the, this simple formula in the SE. Sorry, it's better to use the uh, 
my Apple Pencil, but why I cannot write this Apple Pencil? Oh, yes, good. I can write now. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So if we make a weak rotations, okay, even E minus Bs is negative, uh, negative, yes. We can write uh, classical dynamics around here. Okay. And uh, this exponent can be rewritten by use of the, this equation motion, weak rotated equation motion by this simple formula, you see. This part is nothing but uh, this one. Yeah, and uh, we can, okay. <laughs> and uh, we can rewrite this one. Can be rewritten like uh, this Euclidean action, which is a bouncing solution starting from this one and going back, going to the X2 and back again to the X1, okay? And minus E. This part corresponds to just sit on here, okay? So this transition rate now can be recast into, by recast into the finding the, this bouncing solution and evaluating its actions. Then we can estimate the uh, tunneling rate, you see, for this uh, simple case. This is the basics of the tunneling process in quantum mechanics. Now let's move on to the uh, okay. uh, quantum field case. So first, we can easily imagine that uh, uh, let's generalize uh, this uh, formula to the many body system. In the previous case, I consider just a one point particle system, but it's easy to extend uh, such a system to the many body system. And once we have only to estimate the Euclidean actions by finding the uh, bound solution or classical dynamics for the weak rotated equation motions. And the point is that in case of the many body system, generally speaking, we have a uh, many paths to connect to the X1 and X2. But uh, the path with the least action can be dominant because the transition rate is proportional to the exponential minus SE. And of course, uh, sometimes prefactor is important, but mostly as long as this exponent is very large, such a process is strongly suppressed. So the least action, okay, pass with the least action can be dominant. And the, now we can further easily extend such an argument to the field case. Just field case is this I going to the infinity of uh, just continuous. So, this is a Euclidean action for the field case. And the important difference between the uh, point particle system and the field case, in the field case, we have a gradient energy. Okay? Not only the potential energy, but also the uh, gradient energy. This is a crucial difference between the point particle case and the field case. And in fact, due to this gradient term, or gradient energy, Different from, from the quantum mechanics, the field after tunneling emerge uh, lower down the potential. You see, in case of the point particle systems, if the point particle sit on here, tunneling is uh, going to the same potential energy. This is the most dominant process due to the conservation of the uh, energy. But in case of the field case, you see, even if the Initially, the universe is totally homogeneous and uh, no gradient energy. But once uh, uh, double emerges, we have a, a gradient energy. And uh, due to the conservation of the energy, you see, this gradient energy and the potential energy must coincide with the potential energy before tunneling. Okay. So different from the uh, quantum field case, tunneling fields go into the lower part, not same part, okay, due to the gradient energy. And actually this balance of the gradient energy and the potential energy difference determines the radius of the bubble. Okay. I'm going to explain later. And how to estimate the, uh, this tunneling rate? We have only to estimate the, uh, this Euclidean action and due to the classical dynamics. And in case of the field theory, we have a many paths 
connecting from the phi f and going to phi i, this true value, and again going back to phi f. This is a bound solution. And there are many, many solutions to satisfy such a boundary condition in general. But very interestingly, Coleman et al. prove that that all of the solution satisfying the, this equation motion, uh, among the all of such solutions, the solution with maximal symmetry, this case the all four symmetry, gives the least action. They prove it. Thanks to this argument, you see, we can say that uh, the solution with O4 symmetry gives the least action. It means that uh, it can give the dominant process for these tunnelings. And in this case, this partial differential equation, equation motion, can be simply recast into the, this ordinary differential equations. And uh, at least numerically, we can easily solve uh, this ordinary differential equation with these boundary conditions. Okay. So once we get a uh, uh, solution with these boundary conditions, and uh, once you get uh, such a solution, just plug into the such a solution to this formula, you can obtain the, uh, this exponent. Okay. And uh, now you can estimate the uh, tunneling rate. And once you are interested in the uh, prefactors, you see, what you have to do is that now you get the classical solutions. So you can expand the action with respect to the, this classical solutions. Of course, this classical solution says that the first variation of the action with respect to this classical solution, you see, just the del F, del phi, vanish. But the second part, you see, second derivative, the variation does not vanish. And, uh, if such a secondary part is nothing but a Gaussian term, and which equivalent to the one loop effect. So you can estimate uh, such a uh, Gaussian terms, and the one loop estimate can be, as you know, one loop estimate, one loop contribution can be written as a logarithmic term. So exponential times logarithmic gives a prefactor. Okay. So prefactor is given by the uh, one loop effect or Gaussian term around uh, these classical solutions. Okay. This is the uh, basics of the tunneling process in the quantum field theory. Okay. Now, let's move on to the uh, tunneling process with gravity taken into account. Okay. Again, we have only to estimate the Euclidean solution for the bouncing solution which connects the false vacuum to the true vacuum, okay, more or less. And this is a Euclidean action. Now we have to take into account the Euclid, Euclidean einstein hilbert action, okay, because now we try to include the gravity effect. So metric also must be Euclidianized. So one point I, I would like to mention here, you see, Generally speaking, even if you consider the real metric in the Lorentzian signature, metric in the Euclidean signature is not necessarily uh, real. It can be imaginary in general and vice versa. You see, even if this Euclidean metric is real, if we make, make a, again, we rotate to the Lorentzian signature, this Lorentz Euclidean metric Converting to the Lorentzian is not necessarily uh, real. So this is still under debate. Someone says that uh, such an imaginary metric is okay, but someone they should we should prohibit it. This is still open questions. And for example, once you impose a D2 symmetry with respect to the cosmic time, uh, the reality, the realness of the, this metric is guaranteed. See, even if you consider the real metric, if you consider the real metric in the Euclidean, and we have a Z2 symmetry in cosmic time, or Euclidean time, uh, metric in Lorentzian signature also real. This is one method to guarantee the uh, realness of the metric. Anyway, shall we go into the, uh, we have only to consider the, such a Euclidean equation motions. Now, not only scalar equation motions, but also 
we need to consider the uh, Einstein equation in the Euclidean version. Okay. And another important point is that in the case without gravity, Coleman et al. proved that for this, for the solution satisfying the, among the solution satisfying this equation, the least action is given by the solution with the maximum symmetry. But in case of the uh, gravity, okay, gravity take into account, no one has yet proved that the maximal symmetric solution gives the least action. So this is totally assumption. Okay. Still open, important open questions. But once we admit these assumptions, okay, again, metric also assumes that uh, with respect to this O4 symmetry, uh, equation motion can be recast into the ordinary differential equation. This is the scalar equation motion, and uh, this is the uh, Einstein equation motion. Okay. And, uh, and so we can solve the, uh, this, this system with adequate boundary conditions. But uh, there is another issue uh, to be noticed in case of the gravity take into account. Because now, for example, let's consider this case. And this is a Doshita background once this field uh, stays here. Because we have a positive energies. And uh, as long as the universe is homogeneous and entropic, this is nothing but the Doshita space time. Okay. And now we consider the Euclidean Doshita space. It's nothing but the sphere, you see, S3. So radius is finite. So in case of the field theory, we have to start here from the infinite time, effectively, and going here and back to here again. Okay. But now the range of the sphere is limited because the radius is finite. So different from the case without gravity, the, this bounce action can move only the, this finite period. period. Okay. So not starting from this one. On the other hand, starting from here and going here and back to here with this period, basically. Okay. So physically, it means that if we gravity take into account, the tunneling starts from not only this force vacuum, but also relatively higher energy states and tunneling to this one. And the extreme case, if the, this curvature is smaller than the, this Hubble radius, uh, just tunneling stop here. And this is a bouncing solution. And this is called the so-called uh, Hawking most instant on solutions. Uh, Hubble parameter is very strong and the uh, Doshita fluctuation is very significant. It's a kind of the uh, thermal fluctuations. So thanks to the Doshita fluctuations, this position up to here, jumped to this one or this one and tunnel to this one. Okay. This is a crucial difference uh, between the case without gravity and the case with gravity. So again, let me stress that if the gravity is not taken into account, okay, Coleman et al. has already proven that solution with O4 symmetry gives the least actions. So if you are interested in the uh, dominant path, uh, you have only to consider the solution with the O4 symmetry, as long as the background is homogeneous and isotropic. On the other hand, if you gravity take into account, this argument is still completely open problem, open questions. No one has proved this kind of a solution gives uh, these actions. So young people, uh, please try uh, this question. Masahide, so there is, yes. a, there is a question from Jerome Martin regarding the point that you are just raising now. Uh, the okay. question is that why is it difficult to prove that O4 gives the least actions in the presence of gravity? So if you can yes. address. Yeah, yes, yeah. So the main point is that, so now if we consider this Euclidean Hilbert actions, so in principle, this action is neither bounded from below nor other bounded from above. So in principle, you can make uh, 
any configurations, which can be arbitrarily small or arbitrarily large. So you see, this case, this, as long as this is a positive definite, kinetic, kinetic term is bounded from below. And the potential is also, if you consider this kind of potential bounded from below. So we can, in some sense, show that uh, uh, this system is bounded from below. But in case of the, if you take into account uh, Euclid and Einstein Hilbert actions, in principle, this can take any value from below or lower. So someone claims that, for example, okay, Tohuft uh, criticized uh, using the Euclidean gravity, consider the Euclidean gravity, because this Hilbert action is uh, not bounded from below or bounded from above. So now, yeah, we, to be honest, I'm also working on the, these topics. And now I wonder that Euclidean method might not good approach to address uh, these questions. I'm not sure. Okay. Maybe this, I'm not sure this is a solution to your question or just an explanation to Jerome. Jerome, is it okay? <laughs> okay, thanks. So, um, so, Masai, yeah. they, so there are yeah. few questions along the line. Maybe we'll take those things at the end of the talk. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So those are in the chat box. Maybe you can have a look later and we can discuss. Yes. It. Okay. 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 So summarize, you see, in order to estimate the tunneling rate, we have only to estimate the Euclidean actions and uh, to find the uh, uh, bouncing solutions. You see, which connect the true vacuum, false vacuum to the true vacuum. And uh, just to uh, minus the empty and the uh, false vacuum state. Okay. We have only to estimate this quantity as long as you are interested in the, this exponent. Okay. So just to find a bouncing solution and to estimate the Euclidean actions. But generally speaking, you see, in case of the O4 symmetry, this partial differential equation can be cast into the ordinary differential equations. So you can, at least numerically, you can easily solve the, these systems. But without such symmetries, it's extremely difficult to so solve the, this partial differential equation with adequate two boundary problems. Okay. So now let's consider the another method to estimate the decay tunneling rate not finding the uh, bouncing solution directories. In fact, bubble radius and the Euclidean action can also be determined by using the Israel junction condition in the sum limit, so-called the seam wall approximation limit. Seam wall approximation limit is like that. When the, this energy difference is much smaller than the, this energy barrier height, you see, this potential barrier. In this case, uh, wall, wall of the bubble, wall radius of the bubble is much smaller than the uh, radius of the uh, bubble itself. And in this case, we can use the uh, Israel junction conditions because the uh, bubble wall radius is very, very thin. So now, let, let me show the how to estimate uh, bounce radius and the uh, bouncing action by use, using the SRI junction condition. Okay. The situation is uh, similar. Outside bubble, you see, false vacuum is now considered the Minkowski. And inside is the uh, ADS, okay. lower in potential energy state. And we simply assume that this we consider the bubble, but the bubble radius, you see, bubble radius it's much smaller than the uh, bubble radius. Okay. So we can just using the uh, junction condition before this, uh, for the, this metric around the bub, bub, uh, uh, outside the bubble and the uh, inside the bubbles, just to connect uh, these two regions through the Israel junction condition. And the Israel junction condition just says, okay, you see, we just simply assume that outside the bubble, false vacuum, this is Minkowski. So metric is now given by this one. This is just a Minkowski metric. And the inside the bubble, 
we simply assume that this is ADS. So ADS is just given by this. Okay. And the SRI junction condition says that the difference of the outside and the inside of the uh, exchange curvature is compensated by the, this wall tension, okay. energy momentum tensor of the wall. This is nothing but the SRI junction conditions. And in this case, this SRI junction condition is simply written like this one. This is the extension curvature for inside bubble, and this is the extension curvature for outside bubble. And it's difference, that difference is compensated by the, this tension of the wall. And the diff this ordinary differential equation can be easily solved this one. And this ROI is nothing but the initial bubble radius when the bubble is nucleated. And this initial bubble radius can be physically easily estimated by following argument. So as I told you before, you see, in case of the field case, not only potential energy, but also gradient energy must be taken into account. So Typical radius of the critical bubble is determined by the balancing of the decreased potential energy compensated by the, this gradient energy or surface tension. Okay. You see, inside the bubble and outside the bubble, when the bubble is nucleated, this is a, just a, a volume of the, this bubble. Okay. And uh, this is the uh, energy difference between the outside and inside. And the uh, gradient energy is accumulated in the, this wall, okay, in case of the shin wall bubble. So this is a surface area and the uh, surface tension. And once you equate these two contributions, typical bubble radius can be easily estimated, this one. And now we take into account gravities so this is the correction for the gravity. So gravity modifies the, this surface radius, okay, areas. So this is a, a estimate of the initial bubble by this simple argument, okay. And once you get uh, this bubble radius, you can easily estimate the uh, Euclidean action in the standard one. And we completely reproduce the coleman lucia case, you see, standard, uh, Euclidean actions. Okay. This is a basic strategy. So we have now two methods to estimate the uh, radius of uh, bounce actions. One is, uh, of course, you can solve the, uh, this differential equation to find a uh, uh, bounce solution correctly. This is one method. And of course, this is the most precise estimate. But in case the symbol approximations, uh, approximately, we can use the Israel junction conditions, which gives the uh, almost the same result. Okay. And this, these are the uh, methods to estimate the uh, turning radius and the turning rate. But these calculations are based on the homogeneity and isotropy of, of the universe, at least before tunneling, or more precisely, you see. In the forest vacuum state, we assume that uh, our universe is homogeneous and the uh, tunneling solution is uh, given by the O4 bounds. And this kind of assumption is very good. As long as you are interested in the tunneling during or just after inflation, because during the inflation, the universe is totally homogenized. So this assumption is quite nice, okay. But recently, quantum tunnelings receive the renewed interest in the context of the fixed physics, okay, rather than the context of the equation universe. And now let's briefly uh, review the Higgs potential or Higgs physics, okay. So as you know, uh, almost now, oh, eight years ago, okay, two of, two of experiments at the LHC, Atlas group and the CMS group, reported independently that the Higgs particle whose mass is around 125 GB has been finally found, okay? And the importance of the Higgs mass is 
following. Of course, itself is very important. This is a Higgs potential, typical Higgs potential. Okay. And uh, this, which represents a symmetry breaking. And the Higgs field has a two double, two, two complex doublets. So we have a four components. Of course, once symmetry is broken, three of them are, are eaten by gauge field. And the only one remains, and which is a physical Higgs. And the physical Higgs mass is depressed, is represented by the this couplings, combination of the this coupling and the vacuum extension values. Okay. And once you consider that this four Fermi interactions at a low energy. Now, this four Fermi interaction is depressed by the gauge interactions. And in fact, this four Fermi interaction is exactly given by the, this uh, vacuum extension values. So from the observation of the, this Fermi couplings, this uh, vacuum extension value is known to be the 246 GB. And so once we get Higgs mass, and now B is determined by the, this four Fermi interactions. So once we know the Higgs mass, this coupling is determined. Okay. Higgs self coupling is uh, given by the Higgs mass and the uh, uh, extension values. And now we know both of them. So Higgs, we know the Higgs self coupling. And this is, of course, this is a three level argument. And so we have to take into account uh, quantum loop correction. And of course, such couplings runs with scale. Okay. And this is a learning of the uh, Higgs self couplings. Okay. And as you know, as the denormalization scale uh, gets larger and larger, Higgs self couplings gets smaller and smaller. And if we expand, magnified around this one, this is a learning of the Higgs self-couplings. It's quite interesting, you see. Still, there are some uncertainty, uncertainty due to the uncertainty of the uh, top coke mass or the uh, strong couplings. But generally speaking, at the large renormalization scales, Higgs self-couplings can be negative. Okay. Of course, there are still large uncertainty and someone claims that Higgs self couplings just go into zero at the Planck scale. It's a very, in some sense, it's interesting. But if you take just a, a central values, Higgs self couplings just go into negative. Okay. And what's the physical meaning of the, this self couplings is negative? You see, this coupling is negative. It means that schematically speaking, potential energy if we go into the higher and higher energy scale, potential energy gets lower and lower, and finally it gets negative. Okay, so even if now we live in the, some uh, electric breaking symmetry scaling around here, not exactly zero, that's the 246 GB we live here. Okay, but there might be another true minimum whose energy density can be negative. Okay. So our universe, our, this position, our universe is not absolutely stable, just might be the meta stable. So it is quite important to estimate this tunneling rate or lifetime. Because if this tunneling rate is very high and the lifetime is uh, smaller than our co cosmic age, you see, we cannot live here. And now, Chigusa et al. recently made a very detailed estimate of the, this tunneling rate by using the best fit parameter of the standard model parameters. And they have shown that typical lifetime, as long as, according to their calculation, typical lifetime is much, much longer than the cosmic time. So our universe is now metastable. But their calculation is strongly uh, based on the assumption that our universe is totally homogeneous and isotropic. As I told you before, of course, this is quite nice in the early universe. 
But in the current universe, you see, we have a lot of structures. And also, I should mention one point another. In this, in their calculations, they have not yet taken into account gravity effect. They just estimate the uh, bouncing, they found a bouncing solution without taking into account gravity. Of course, in the current universe, you see, vacuum energy is much, much smaller than the electric scale or particle physics scale. So its negation might be okay, but if you are brave enough, young people, please try to estimate the distancing rate by gravity taking into account. No one has yet done it very precisely. Of course, there are some last estimates. So now let's move on to the effect of the uh, impurity on the tunneling rate. Because you see, as I told you before, in the current universe, there are many structures and the, our universe is not homogeneous, no other isotropic. So what happens if there is an impurity which breaks a special homogeneity, homogeneity or off or symmetry as well? This is a question. And uh, people are now uh, trying to answer the, this question. And for example, we have a, a black holes as such an impurity or as a bubble nucleation site. You see, this is a famous image of the black hole event horizon. Of course, this is not the exact event horizon, but uh, they, yeah, more or less event horizon. And uh, in our universe, not only this kind of the supermassive black hole, but also stellar mass black hole, and even a much smaller one called a primordial black hole. In the next talk, Professor Teruakusiyama will discuss the formation of such a primordial black hole. So I don't go into the detail of the formation of the primordial black hole. But once we consider the, uh, such a primordial black hole as a bubble nucleation site, what happens? Okay. This is a question I'd like to address uh, from now on. Okay. And uh, generally speaking, if we consider the black hole as a bubble nucleation site, it triggers the decay of the vacuum and enhance its rate. So it means that if this kind of enhancement is too large, so that the bubble nucleation rate is much higher than the inverse of the cosmic time, we cannot live here. It means that we have, can have a new constraint on the presence of the, such a black hole. Okay. Anyway, uh, shall we discuss how impurity affect the tunneling rate. And uh, there are several types of the impurity and the effect. See? And uh, it's quite interesting. And how to guess the effect of the impurity? First, let us consider the simplest case, so-called the coleman lucia case. Just before tunneling, universe is assumed to be homogeneous and isotropic. Okay. And interestingly, bubble nucleation process is a kind of the symmetry breaking process, you see. Because even if before the uh, bubble nucleation happens, universe is homogeneous isotropic, but once bubble is nucleated, you see, its position breaks the homogeneity. Okay. So it means that Bubble nucleation process represents sometimes a symmetry breaking process. Okay. So very naively, if we have a O3 spherical symmetry okay, for the some impurities, like a Schwarzschild black hole, it means that from the beginning or even before tunneling, this impurity already breaks the homogeneity. So in this sense, this homogeneity uh, might enhance the tunneling rate. Because typically speaking, this symmetry breaking process, this kind of a symmetry breaking process is suppressed. So once we have a, this kind of uh, spherical symmetric object from the beginning, we don't need to, even if the tunneling happens, we don't need to break the symmetry. So in this sense, this enhancement Hap might happen. Okay. This is the first point. And uh, the question is that, okay, for example, this kind of the spherical symmetric object, as an example, we can consider the Schwarzschild block 4 or the 
spherical some compact, ob compact object like a monopole, neutron star, or something. So, is there any difference between black hole or compact object? Okay. This is a question, first question I would like to address. And now let's consider the compact object with less symmetries, not only the spherical symmetry. For example, if we consider the car black hole, we have only the axis symmetry, like this one. So in that case, what happens? You see, now we can imagine that probably this presence of the, this black hole try to enhance the uh, nucleation rate as a nucleation site. But again, from the nucleation of the bubble, this symmetry is broken even this O3 spherical symmetry. So we can ex estimate uh, two competing effects, enhancement and uh, deductions. Okay. And uh, in the same way, what happens if we consider the axis symmetric compact object different from black hole, or even this kind of the string object? You see. This, very recently, some Iranian people addressed uh, this kind of the uh, string configurations, but generally speaking, it's quite difficult to estimate uh, this kind of tunneling process with less symmetries. And please notice that now we consider the, just one impurities, but if we consider two impurities, you see, even this kind of simple case, I don't know what the tunneling rate, you see. Because of course, as long as these two ob objects are very, very separate enough, tunneling rate is probably just two twice. But if the, these two objects cross, approach each other, cross and crosser, I don't know what's, how, how much the tunneling rate is changed according to the distance of the two objects. Because once we have another compact object, this O4 symmetry is broken. And with less symmetries, uh, it's extremely difficult to obtain the uh, bound solution or even to apply for the uh, Israel junction conditions. I'm going to, if I have enough time, I'm going to explain later. So Masahide, you have 15 yes. minutes more. Okay. 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 Yes. Thank you. So now let's consider that this first case is a Schwarzschild black hole as a uh, bubble nucleation site. Again, the technique is uh, quite similar. Now let's consider that some bubble nucleated. Inside, outside is uh, just a Schwarzschild matrix, and inside is a ADS Schwarzschild matrix. Let's consider the two matrix. Okay. And now bubble is nucleated. Again, we have only to use the Israel junction condition. Okay. Just a uh, extension curvature outside and intense curvature outside, uh, inside. Its difference is compensated the uh, wall tensions. Okay. And uh, in the same way, we can easily estimate uh, this kind of the simple equation with respect to the uh, radius of the bubbles. Okay. In case of the CDL, we can have uh, analytic solutions, but in general, it's much more complicated. Okay. And uh, this is uh, a potential, effective potential for these systems. And the coleman lucia solution, in, in case of the coleman lucia we have uh, this one. Okay. And in case of the Euclidean, just uh, discussing the uh, bubble nucleation, we have to only to flip this action. So just flip, starting from this one and the nucleate bubble and again this one, okay, like this one. This is a bound solution for coleman lucia But in case of the, if the black hole exists before tunnelings, the potential is slightly modified due to the gravity effect, you see, strong gravity for black hole. Potential is significantly modified. And now just to go into zero, we have a oscillate around this one, like this one. Okay. 
So from here to here. So at maximum radius, bubble is nucleated in the same way with the Coleman Lucia, you see. From zero and the radius gets larger and larger and at, at maximal point, if we make a weak rotate with the Lorentz signature, bubble is nucleated. And once bubble is nucleated, it expands thanks to the vacuum energies. And in the same way, in case of the uh, black hole, existence of the black holes, we have a, this kind of the uh, bound solutions. And at the maximum values, bubble is nucleated and it expands. So in some sense, it's totally same. And uh, this is uh, some schematic picture of the Euclidean manifold. This is just to represent the outside vacuum and this is the wall and the bound solutions, you see, from some R minimum to R maximum and going back to R minimum. And this is the uh, inside bubbles. And this is a black hole horizon of a conical singularity in the Euclidean case. And uh, we have only to estimate the Euclidean actions. But uh, due to this, the presence of this conical singularities, we have taken into account uh, Gibbons Hawking boundary terms, which is nothing but uh, black hole entropies. So in the presence of the black holes, you see, different from the Coleman Lucia, just a homogeneous isotope case, Euclidean action consists of not only Euclidean dynamics of the bubble wall, but also the black hole entropy must be taken into account. In some sense, this is co completely similar to this argument. This entropy is not, nothing but uh, well, just a Euclid action, nothing but the free energy divided by uh, temperature. And the free energy consists of the entropy and the energy. Okay. This is quite straightforward comparison. So final tunneling rate can be estimated by this Euclidean actions. And this is uh, some initial mass, control of the initial mass, and the ratio of the Euclidean action in comparison to the uh, homogeneous isotropic case. Okay. No black hole case. And you can easily see that depending on the parameter, of course, it, actual uh, magnitude of the bounds uh, Euclidean action depends on the some parameters. But generally speaking, the presence of the black hole enhances the nucleation rate. Okay. This is a quite interesting uh, result. And uh, this work is first uh, discussed uh, uh, Hiscock almost four, 35 years ago. And recently, Gregory et and many authors uh, argument, make a similar argument. But now we have to, I have to make uh, some uh, comment on this. Okay. So now we have to take into account not only the Euclidean dynamics wall, but also we have to take into account the black hole entropy. Okay. And once tunneling happens, okay, it means that cosmological constant gets lower Inside, even inside the black hole. It means that black ho horizon area, you see, or entropy of black hole decrease as a result of the tunneling. Okay. So I don't know, second law of the thermodynamics holds true even in this case, you see. Naively, we can expect even if the black hole entropy decreases. Now bubble is nucleated. And the bubble can have uh, some entropy, you see. After the bubble collides, it's thermalized. It has an uh, entropy. So we can expect in total entropy probably increase. But still, this is completely open problem. Noah has shown that uh, uh, as a result of the tunnelings, uh, total entropy increase or not. Okay, this is the first point. And uh, another case is that, another interesting case is that even this bouncing process 
you see, as a result of the bounce, uh, as a result of the tunnelings, existing black holes can be completely wiped out in some case, you see. From the, before tunnelings, there is a black hole. But after the tunnelings, such a black hole might be wiped out, you see. In the quantum theory, all we can do is that uh, given the initial state and given the final state, uh, what is the transition rate from the initial state to the final state? So in principle, we can consider that any state. Okay? And uh, even we can consider the uh, final state without black holes. And actually, it's such an action is uh, smaller than, some case smaller than the Euclidean uh, coleman lucia case. And it can enhance the uh, tunneling rate. Okay. But uh, I don't know, in this case, where is the information stocked inside a black hole going to, you see? Because a black hole completely wiped out or disappears. So one possibility is again, you see, bubble wall can have the, such an entropy, uh, sorry, such an information. But no one has yet discussed this kind of uh, entropy argument or information argument yet. So uh, young people, if you are interested in the, this kind of questions, uh, please try. And maybe I have just five minutes. So, uh, okay, I just mentioned the, uh, another case, you see. Now, is there any candidate for impurity other than black holes? Okay, yes, there are many others. Uh, for example, we can consider the monopole, neutron star, action star cube, as you wish, there are many compact objects. And so the question is that, is there any crucial difference between black hole and the other compact object. See? Yes, while black hole has horizons, but the others has not. Okay. So in case of the, as I told you before, generally speaking, we have, to, in case of the black hole, we have to take into account the black hole entropy. And as a result of the tunneling process, black hole entropy decreases. So in this sense, Black, decreasement of the such a black hole entropy prevents the tunneling. Of course, in the total, if we take into account the uh, uh, Euclidean action coming from the bubble dynamics, total bounce gets smaller and smaller. But uh, change of the uh, Bekenstein entropy is negative, which in some sense hinders the black hole entropy, uh, sorry, hinders the uh, tunneling. But once we consider the compact object, we don't need to take into account such a black hole entropy. Okay, so very naively, compact object enhance tunneling rate more. Okay. Because we don't have a, such a black hole entropy. And the technique is completely the same. We just consider the some metric inside and outside of the bubbles. Now, you see, you have to take into account uh, some uh, configuration of the compact object, not simply the mass. And we have only to use the Israel junction conditions. Okay. I don't repeat. And uh, this is a coleman lucia case, you see effective potentials. And uh, this is a black hole case. And in case of the compact object, we have uh, this kind of the similar argument. Okay. And, uh, once we have uh, some bound solution and it's going to the maximum values, bubble is nucleated. Okay. Since I don't have enough time, I don't go into the details. And the uh, condition that decay rate is drastically enhanced only if the radius of the compact object is comparable to the radius of the CDL bubble and also the, it's comparable to the uh, similar radius of the uh, Schwarzschild radius. So as you might expect, of course, compact object can enhance the tunneling rate, but the compact object might be really compact. It's very close to the uh, Schwarzschild radius. And also, if we would like to take into account such a gravity effect, you see compact 
radius of the compact object is comparable to the radius of the CDL bubbles. Otherwise, uh, we cannot prove such a presence of the compact object. And uh, this is a compactness parameter. This is, this is a critical bubble. If this compactness parameter is sm smaller than this critical bubble, just a black hole is formed. Okay. And uh, this region, if we take uh, uh, some parameter in the standard model Higgs, you see, this region tunneling rate is much higher than the uh, inverse of the age of the universe. So we cannot live here. So it means that uh, these objects can be ruled out. And uh, now let's estimate the comparison with the uh, uh, catalyzing effect of the black hole case. You see. This is a ratio of the tunneling rate and uh, the inverse of the cosmic time. If this is larger than zero, we cannot live here. Okay. And the CDL is uh, completely okay. You see, according to the, if we assume that the universe is homogeneous isotropics, tunneling rate is much, much suppressed than the inverse of the cosmic age. But once we have a black hole, you see, and if the black hole mass is larger and larger, sometimes tunneling rate is too enhanced and we cannot live here. So this black holes must be uh, prohibited. And in the similar way, compact object, if we have a compact object and some higher mass compact object, we cannot live here. So this object must be prohibited. And generally speaking, compact object can enhance tunneling rate more than black holes. This is because, you see, now once we compare only the bubble Euclidean action coming from the bubble dynamics, Black hole has more enhanced. But in case of the black holes, we have to take into account, uh, sorry, bubble dynamics. We have to take into account black hole entropies and which suppress the tunneling rate. So in total, compact objects enhance the tunneling rate more than black holes. This is a logic. And uh, now, yeah by using the, this kind of argument, we can give some constraint on the abundance of the, some compact object, like a hidden sector magnetic monopole or something like that. But maybe it's better to stop here, you see. Now, yeah, we can also consider the car black hole case, but uh, I don't have enough time, so I don't go into the details and uh, I'm stop here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Masahide. Yes. Uh, so I will. Uh, so we'll take. Uh, so there are there are some uh, co uh, comment and the questions in the chat box. So yes. I I'll just pick up one by one. Uh, you also uh, you know just have a look. So the first uh, first point essentially came from Junik Sen Gupta. This was uh, in in regarding your comments that uh, because of the gradient energy, you can tunnel to the lower potential energy uh, yes. of the of, for the bubble. Uh, and then the point was that, is there any possibility the particle can penetrate to higher potential state? That was the question by Junik Sen Gupta. Ah, yes, yes. Of course, in principle, we can consider uh, any state in principle, you see. In the quantum theory, uh, we can, as I told you before, we can consider any initial state at the final state. Just the point is that uh, such a tunneling, such a state, such a transition is normally Quite suppressed. Okay. So in principle, it's okay. It, yeah, there is no zero, no zero possibility, non-zero possibility. Yes. Yes. So then there are uh, two 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 questions from uh, Jaffrey Ahmed and Rajiv, uh, almost uh, similar along the line of Zero Martin. So it was yes. like uh, one one uh, uh, question by Jaffrey was in one bubble case for five five four theory without gravity. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, da, uh, in real space, does O4 invariance mean that the solution is an expanding kink? What do you mean by kink? And uh, I'm not sure. FIFO theory means that just a FIFO, no, no mass time. Because only FIFO theory, we don't have tunneling. Just only one, you see, uh, one minimum. So, sorry, I 
don't understand the question. So, uh, Zafri, would you would you like to uh, maybe turn on your audio and for some clarification to the question, maybe? So you consider some, uh, maybe I can share this. So now you consider this exact case or something. Sorry, and the kink solution is this one, connector this one. You mean that this kind of case? Okay, so, uh, okay. Zafri, you can uh, turn on your uh, ah. audio. <laughs> okay. uh, audio. I think and... he's, uh, Kaushik, he's having difficulty turning on the mic. Okay. okay. Uh, okay, so, so maybe we can move to the next okay. question, I think. Okay, sorry. Okay. So then Rajiv had a uh, question similar to Jerome. Oh, why does the symmetry remain O4 even in the presence of gravity? So ah, in, yeah, yeah, just uh, this is just an assumption. Just, uh, just uh, no one proved it. And uh, practically speaking, as I told you before, without O4 symmetry, you see, equation motion is still partially differential equations. And uh, even numerically, it's extremely difficult to solve such an equation motion, and uh, we don't have another method. Just the reason. Yeah, so if this argument is wrong, almost all papers relying on the, this O4 assumption uh, must be abandoned. So our understanding is completely can be modified, you see. So this is a very important question. This is just assumption. Just we expect our, you see, thanks in, in, from the guessing the case without gravity, just we as, assume and practically, this is the most simple and tractable. Okay. okay. So uh, Ornob Sarkar, when you introduce the, uh, introduce the quant uh, tunneling for the field theory, you introduced, uh, mention, you mentioned about the flat space time and also the de -sitter space time. With respect to that, he had a question, why de -sitter metric is considered here? Ah, okay. So, in, so this is, uh, it, it depends on uh, what kind of situation you are interested in. For example, if you are interested in the inflation, you see, or in the current universe, our universe has a positive uh, cosmological constant. So as long as uh, uh, such a positive cosmological constant dominates the energy density of the universe, and the universe is a homogeneous isotropic, it's a Doshita space. So we are interested in the transition from such a Doshita space to the lower energy space. Okay. So, but uh, for example, if we consider, if we are interested in the tunneling from current state and uh, if the positive cosmological constant is negligible, we are interested, we consider the transition from the Minkowski background to the ADS situation. Okay. So it depends on which situation you are interested in. And we, we need to formulate both cases or any more generic case. Okay. Then, uh, then Sogot Misra had a uh, question. Uh, will the bubble wall velocity be zero or can it vary from bubble to bubble? Ah, yes. So, in, so just uh, according to the bounce solutions, we normally connect that uh, when we make a, a weak rotation from Euclidean to Lorentzian, uh, we typically, uh, when we connect such a point, typically the bubble radius is the maximum. So bubble wall velocity is typically zero. But of course, uh, you can consider the uh, case with the uh, finite bubble velocity. You see, as, as I told you before, any transition can be considered, but that if we consider the bubble wall velocity is non-zero, typically such a process is suppressed. Okay, then Disa has a, uh, has a, has a question that is, uh, wh what does bubble physically corresponds to uh, in this tunneling particle problem? So if you can describe it in, in terms of physically what is happening, that's what probably he, uh, she, would, she would like to know. Uh, you mean the bubble, bubble is, in, some, in some sense, bubble is, uh, you mean the particle case. Ah, okay, you mean the field theory is the tunneling. Ah, ah, okay, I see. Hmm, it's quite interesting question. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure how can we understand this tunneling process from point of uh, uh, particle viewpoint. Because you see, for example, once we have a particles, it means that uh, 
at least homogeneity and isotropy is broken. So we have to consider this particle as uh, impurities, you see. And uh, even if we consider the particle as impurities, other background fields cannot be interpreted as a particle. So, uh, so this are uh, this are if you if you want to unmute your uh, voice and explain your uh, uh, question, that would be uh, that would be nice. So can you, uh, Disa, can you please do that? Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, hi, I am audible. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes sure. Okay. Uh, no, I had a very basic question actually, not regarding impurities, but uh, you were describing this methods that uh, we can solve this tunneling problem. And then you said uh, that one can also use bubble nucleation method. So I was just wondering what does it physically correspond to uh, suddenly thinking in terms of bubbles and not particle moving from one uh, place. Of ah, the okay. Place. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 sorry, it's okay, just a basic so, question. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so just bubble, this bubble technique can be applied to just a field case. You see, because uh, in case of the field, we have a gradient energy. So the bubble is just connecting from the force vacuum to the field bubble configuration. In case of the particle case, we don't have such a bubble. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So when um, um, so this if you please unmute yourself. Uh, so Robert uh, Brandenburger ha had a question uh, when you were discussing uh, this Israel uh, the, uh, matching condition. So his question ah, okay. was yes. his question was how do you yes. know the wall tension sigma in yes. a bubble bubble wall tension? Yes. 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 Uh, we don't know. So just uh, we can simply assume the wall tension. What, if you would like to really know the tensions, we have to have a, some definite potential shape. Once we have a potential, you see, we can determine the tensions. And the, so merit of the, this junction condition merit is that uh, even if we don't know the detail of the uh, potential shape, we can match. But because of the we don't, because we don't know the potential shape, of course, this tension is just given by hand. Is this answer? <laughs> uh, um, okay, maybe uh, Robert can write uh, his comments in the chat box. Okay. Uh, yes. uh, yeah. So then uh, Swagato Mishra had a, a comment, uh, a question also, that in the, in the context of when you're telling that the self-coupling become a negative for the Higgs potential, uh, yes. you, you assume the particle particles uh, are only the standard model particles. Is this assumption correct? Uh, to be honest, we also, uh, I mean, the uh, negativeness itself is just assume the uh, uh, standard particles. Yes, just uh, assuming the standard particle and the uh, uh, standard, just uh, standard parameters. But when I calculate the tunneling rate, to be honest, if the tunneling rate, and the potential is unbounded from below. Uh, the tunneling rate can be, I mean, the tunneling rate is too large. So typically, we expect uh, some uh, quantum gravity effect and introduce the uh, five to six terms to st stabilize the potential. Yes. But the uh, negativeness of the uh, Higgs couplings, its calculation itself is completely uh, by assuming the standard particle. Yes, yes. Thanks. Okay, so Robert Brandenberger said thank you. And then we go to the next, uh, next question by Ashley Wilkinson. Uh, so question was that, does the tunneling rate gamma have any link to the quantum effective action? The tunneling rate gamma has any... Ah, so strictly speaking, now we use uh, just a quant uh, effective potentials. Okay, but the effective potential is uh, justified only when the uh, field is homogeneous and isotropic. So, strictly speaking, once we discuss the tunneling, bubble is nucleated, which, de uh, de which genera generates a homogeneity, inhomogeneity. So, we have to, strictly speaking, we have to uh, consider the quantum effective action. And by using such a quantum effective actions, we have to estimate the tunneling rate. So Is Ashley, this answer to your question? <laughs> Ashley, if you have any comments in response to that, please uh, unmute your uh, microphone and please, uh, okay. 
so um, uh, okay if not then maybe uh, uh, we can go to the next comment uh, that is yes. bika uh, bikash bikash pal so uh, bikash uh, would like to know your comments about the about the fact that there are two thoughts due to hawking and vilenkin uh, ah. and, and the thoughts are like the universe either nucleated from nothing or mm-hmm. from some already existing so what is your mm-hmm. comment about uh, this this two uh, two different views of hawking and vilenkin Uh, it's quite difficult for me. It's a, it's a quantum cosmology. And uh, you see, without an experiment, it's just a, your personal view. So I don't have a strong comment for that, like even now, I, in current situation, because you see, no one knows the quantum gravity and uh, we don't have any observations. So it's just uh, your philosophy so it's a matter of philosophy so i don't have strong comment on that sorry okay uh, so then uh, so divya prashad uh, mighty has a has a question and uh, and it is for it is like uh, tunneling is a quantum mechanical phenomena the use of euclidean action is is a technique to compute tunneling uh, yes. when when we have gravity how can you straightforwardly express the decay rate as the exponential of the total action does it mean in reality we are considering quantum gravity also yeah so th- this is a quite interesting question and uh, you see just we guess so what we can do is that in quantum field theory or quantum mechanics given the initial condition and the final conditions we try to find the transition rate okay and uh, in case of the tunnelings uh, in lorentzian signature we don't have a classical solution. But uh, if we consider the Euclidean signatures, we have a classical solution. And just uh, from the uh, path integral approach, such a solution uh, gives a uh, dominant process. Okay. So in some sense, no one has yet justified to use the uh, Euclidean techniques. At least without gravity, you see, standard WKB approximations can be understood in the uh, Euclidean actions. You see. And uh, it's complete, resulted completely coincide. Okay. But once we take into gravity, I'm not sure we can uh, borrow such a technique straightforwardly. And uh, as I told you before, you see, in case of the uh, Euclidean, even in, in case of the gravity, Euclidean Einstein Hilbert action is uh, never bounded. So as I told you before, for example, Professor Tofuft criticized the Euclidean quantum gravity. So I'm not sure even this kind of the time dealing case, uh, Euclidean quantum gravity is a good approach or not. Recently, I'm also skeptical of this approach in case of the uh, gravity for time Sorry, this is just uh, my comment. And uh, this is nearly, this approach is never justified completely. Okay, so Deva Prashad, I, I hope it, it clarifies your uh, the query. And then uh, okay, we have many comments and questions, so we'll just go ahead. We have a few more minutes left. Uh, yes. then, then we have uh, Sriya Hedve uh, is asking about uh, that. Okay, I just summarize. The point was that you mentioned that the, the decay time must be larger uh, you know, the, than the, the age of the universe, but in the context mm-hmm. of this bouncing uh, scenarios, the universe might have also some uh, you know, time before the Big Bang. Uh, so therefore, does this kind of bound works? That was a question. So, so tunneling time scale is larger. So the, you, you, you said the tunneling time scale is larger than the cosmic age, uh, yes. and which is assuming the Big Bang. And can we uh, make any comment in the case of big bounds? Uh, because in that case, ah, uh, there, are, there, okay. there, are no, there are no start of the universe uh, uh, and tunneling might have begun much earlier than uh, we could have. Um, ah, okay. So, but uh, you see, in that case, I'm not sure. It depends on the, how the uh, uh, true minimum appears, when true minimum appears. If the true minimum appears after the bounce, this argument is okay. If the true minimum appears, even uh, bounce happens, probably we have to compare the tunneling time scale in the whole uh, age of the universe. Okay. 
Yes, so it depends on the when the true minimum appears. Okay, so uh, the next uh, next question is by Urjit, but also I request Urjit to turn on the audio. I mean, if he if, if he wants to clarify the question a bit more well. Yeah. So push, yeah, Urjit, please. So, uh, uh, yes, yeah, my question is: um, Can you also consider asymmetric seeding of the true vacuum from, let us say, the horizon, some part of the horizon, and not centrally located? Yes. 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 Yes, this is a very good question. And in fact, uh, this kind of process also happens. But very unfortunately, you see, if we consider the such uh, configurations, even all three symmetry is broken. And right now, at least I cannot estimate such a rate. Okay. You see, probably this configuration is less symmetry. So I expect such a process is suppressed. But no one has proved it, no one has shown it. In fact, uh, as I told you before, you see, only the case with a very high symmetry case, we can estimate the tunneling rate. If we consider this kind of the uh, configuration with less symmetry, we cannot estimate the rate, just ex expect it. Yes. Thank you. Very good question. Thanks. Thank so, okay. So, would you please uh, uh, mute your um, uh, microphone? So, Priyank Parashari has a, has a question. In the early universe, phase transitions can lead to primordial gravitational waves. Can this compact object or primordial black hole affect the primordial gravitational wave? So, ah, okay. So, yes, okay. So now when we estimate the tunneling rate for the compact object, we simply assume that uh, there is uh, no interaction between compact object or bubbles, you see, except gravity. So if we consider the interaction between compact object or PBH or uh, with uh, some uh, bubble or scalar field, it might affect. Yeah, but uh, in that case, it's extremely difficult to estimate the tunneling rate itself if we, you take into account such an uh, interaction. Okay, then Jewel, uh, Jewel Kumar Ghosh has uh, two uh, questions. One is that, so his, his point is that usually tunneling from ADS, the action is divergent. Uh, it is, all, is it also true for the case you considered? If yes, what kind of normalization do you do? Ah, so first, I'm not sure in the case from tunneling from ADS to where? ADS to further, smaller Joel, would you like energy. To, would you like to turn on your audio if you have? If you have any quick comment. Uh, hi, Professor. Hi. Hello. Uh, so, yeah, I was also doing similar kind of project with my Professor Kiritsis. And so we are considering from uh, tunneling from ADS to ADS. And then probably you know that if you, if, you have, if you have an action ADS, then this is usually divergent. And you need to use some kind of renormalization to uh, get rid of the divergences. So my question is like, do you face similar kind of uh, so, so you mean that divergence is uh, coming from the one loop effect, or even uh, uh, no, just, if, if, if the divergence is coming because the volume of the ADS is infinity. So if you if you just if you just uh, do the integration, then there should be some kind of divergence because because of the infinite volume. Ah, okay. But in case of ADS, uh, ADS, we have an ADS radius. So apparently the space is. Uh, you see, divergent uh, action can be typically finite. Of course, it depends on the configuration. Uh, that's true, yeah. So like, what do you do? Like normally, so I'm coming from- ah, Yes, the yes, yeah, yeah. This is uh, quite good, you see. Uh, without gravity, the, mm -hmm. in the case without gravity, we estimate the one loop effect. Yeah. You see, as a prefactor. Mm -hmm. But of course, once we take into account gravity, gravity yes. is non normalizable. So we cannot estimate the prefactor or one loop effect. Still, this is also open question. I see, I see, I see, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I have another question, so if you don't mind. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you mentioned that if you consider black hole, then it en enhances the tunneling rate. So this case is only exclusive for D equals four, or this might be also true for other dimensions? I have never calculated uh, except D equal four, but I guess it's true for even D equal five or six. 
Because because just a, you see, uh, such a tunneling site, site presence of the impurity itself enhances the tunneling rate in some sense. As long as uh, such a presence of the uh, black hole does not break the uh, symmetry which exists before tunneling. Mm -hmm. I see. So, I see. Uh, yeah, as, as long as uh, such a situation is kept, I think black hole will enhance. Okay. okay, so so as we are running uh, uh, like five minutes late, so let's, uh, we would like to uh, close the session. So let's uh, thank uh, uh, Masahide once uh, and then uh,